Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. Everything here is very good. Um, obviously the pay base still is not done. I'm getting the parts tomorrow. They've all shipped. So theoretically tomorrow I will be able to solder this back together. I didn't necessarily, I will talk about it tomorrow. I don't even talk about it right, right now. It is what it is. Um, last week I drove all over the Midwest. I probably spent over 24 hours on a car in a, in a course of five days or six days. That's, I don't think that's an exaggeration. Let's see. We drove 11 and a half hours the first day. We drove three and a half hours the second day. Uh, the third day was almost seven hours. And... This is driving days. So there was a day in between those. And then the last day was uh, a little over six hours, six and a half hours, whatever that is. Is that about 24 hours? I think we spent about a full day worth of our time between Tuesday and Sunday in a car. Um, and I like driving. I've always enjoyed being on the road. I think most of you know that I have a motorcycle and I enjoy uh uh, just riding solo, um, no comms, no nothing, no no music or anything, just me and my thoughts in the world. And driving is the same way. I very much enjoy just being alone with my thoughts and going on long drives. And I had a lot of opportunity to do that. And um, most of that time, I meditate on, you know, things I'm I'm working on internally. Just, you know, my thoughts about the world, my thoughts about my life and my family and, you know, whatever, that kind of stuff. Um, trying to find pieces that I can put away finally, that I can pack off or whatever. Um, but a good portion of the time, I'm thinking about creative thoughts. I'm writing poetry in my head, and sometimes those poetry make it to page. Sometimes I remember. Um, or <clears throat> I'm thinking up story ideas or whatever. Something magical, or not magical, something interesting happened uh, during, I think, the third day of driving. I don't know that it was, it might have been the last day. I, it was maybe a combination of both. Maybe the, the spark happened, and then I worked on it again the following day's drive, but I designed a card game. Here it is. This is my new card game. Uh, there's really nothing to show you. Right now, it looks like playing cards. Um, it won't look like playing cards. I mean... It will be playing cards, but it won't look like playing cards in the end. Um, this is magical because for a few different reasons. Um, one, I haven't been designing games for a while. The last time I worked on a game was this time last year. I was I had finalized Rival Rails to take to Essen, and I had finalized uh, Dungeon Rummy to take to Essen, and um, both of those projects failed, and they just sit, and I haven't touched game design at all in a year. Um, so it was magic that this popped into my head. The second reason is this is an 18 card game known as a micro game. There's hundreds of 18 card games out there. Uh, Love Letter is probably the most famous. Uh, kind of, I don't want to say it started the whole thing, but it was the impetus for a whole lot of small compact games. And I've been wanting to design one for a while, but designing a small card game is surprisingly difficult. Putting enough interesting choices into a small card game uh, to keep it, keep people wanting to play it instead of it being a one-off, that's really hard to do. And I hadn't been able to find that formula yet. So that years ago, I started trying to design small card games, never could get it to work. Uh, as many of you know, um, my wife and I go on the Flogging Molly Solitary Dog Cruise, which is a week-long music festival on a cruise ship. And part of that experience, if you've joined their Facebook group, is uh, Swag Swap. Last year, I did an art print. And I've been thinking, this year I was going to do a keychain, but I hate keychains. I hate keys. I really, I leave the key, my, the keys to my car just stay, I don't take them out of the car. Like, you want to steal it? Have at it. Uh, I don't want to carry them ever. So I don't want to do the keychain. I've been trying to come up with for the last year 
could I develop a small 18 card game? The reason it's 18 for me in particular is because that's how I order cards. When I order the cards, they come in sheets of 18. So 18 or 36 or 52 or whatever. 18 would be the least or the most cost effective. And I've been trying to figure out, can I pull this off? Can I make a small like two to three dollar card game that I could pop in an envelope and hand to people on the boat. Because I would rather do something DIY than something, uh, you know, manufactured by somebody else. Sure, I would design the logo and whatever on the keychain, but uh, this would be, this is a much more DIY approach. Now, again, yes, I'm going to order the cards printed. I'm going to order the envelopes printed, whatever, but I'm going to still be hand assembling them. I'm going to make the rules myself. I'm going to hand cut and make and assemble the rules. You know, there's still a lot of DIY to this project, but uh, I've been wanting to do um, a, a small game. I thought it'd be really fun to hand out a small game on the ship. Like here, play my, play my board game, play my card game. And I think I got it. I think this is it. I think it works. I, Played it with myself the other day, like I simulated a three-hand thing. It works pretty well. I think there's some tweaks to be done still, but I need to play it with live players to test it and make sure. Uh, but it feels like very similar to when I designed my, my card and coin game, Scallywags. I designed that game. I made the game. We play tested it one time, and it was published. Like, I never play tested it again. It was like, yep, this works. Ship it. And this feels very similar. I feel like, yep, this works, ship it. Uh, the difference here is I have some ideas for, uh, there are cards in here that have special powers and I have some ideas for some different special powers. I think some of these might be a, need to be tweaked a little bit. Um, and that's okay, we'll get to that. But for now, um, I think this is fantastic. And I think that I slapped this together super fast. Now. All that to be said, there's a problem with this product, being that it's um, kind of poker themed. Uh, it's not just 18 cards. You also need like money or poker chips or something for each player. And I, in the in the rules, I'm going to suggest 10 per player. So you'll need 10 coins or bottle caps or dollars or whatever you want to use. It's poker, like you're playing a weird, quirky version of poker. Um, there needs to be, you need to be able to bet and stuff to stay in the hand, that kind of thing. Uh, and to use cards, right? So, is that a problem? Like, is it a problem for me to package this in an envelope? Here's your game. You provide the rest of the components. Is that an issue? I think that's kind of expected when it comes to something like a poker-themed game. Am I wrong about that? Because it would be pretty much, could you do this game without... Uh, without the coins, yes, I think so. I think you could do, I think I could make it work without the coins, but it would be less interesting. It would be less pokery. It would be more, more gamey. Um, and I don't know that I like that. You would still have to keep score somehow because, it, you know, it's going to be played over a series of hands. It's not going to be play it once and put it away. You're going to play you know, you're going to need to play until somebody wins five hands or something like that. So you're, you're keeping, you need something else besides these 18 cards, regardless of which way I go with it. Um, but I, I'd like your opinion on that. Do you feel like it's okay to say, here's 18 cards, it's a game, here's the rules, but you need to provide the money or the money um, stand-in? What is that called? There was a word I was just trying to find for that surrogate surrogate money is that a thing um i don't think it's an issue and i'm willing to do that for especially for this particular reason like i'm handing this to people for free on a boat go play this game uh if i were to sell it if i were to put this on a website and make it available to you the public whatever in the future should there be two versions should there be the version that comes, you supply your own chips or whatever, and a version where I also supply the coins and that it would be in maybe a box or something like that. I feel like putting 18 cards in a box is a little bit pretentious, <laughs> but I would need some way to contain 18 cards plus 40 coins. What do you think about all of that? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully tomorrow I'll get the stuff for this and we can talk about 
this. Is that okay? Got any other any other ideas on what to talk about? Let me know. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's 1,000 plus little things happy, successful people do differently. We are learning about finding gratitude when everything goes wrong. Today is number six, find gratitude when someone you love dies. As we know firsthand, when you lose someone, you can't imagine living without your heart breaks wide open. And the bad news is you never completely get over the loss. You will never forget them. However, we have the ability to push through the experience and even find meaning in it. Ultimately, we grew to appreciate that although death is an ending, it's also a necessary part of living. Limits illum illuminate beauty and death is the ultimate limit. A reminder that we need to celebrate this beautiful person and appreciate this beautiful thing called life. Although deeply sad, this passing forces us to gradually reinvent our lives and in this reinvention as an opportunity to experience beauty in new, unseen ways and places. And finally, death is an opportunity to celebrate a person's life and be grateful for the beauty they showed us. Life's disappointments and struggles are not easy to find gratitude for, but they can become incredible paths of growth. I think that uh, I have a very different relationship with death. I view it as just part of life, and it does not necessarily impact me in a grieving way. Uh, what I grieve for in death is everybody else's loss, right? I grieve for the family who experienced the loss, not for the person who passed, not for my personal like connection to that person, but for everybody else's. Like it's in, it's an empathetic grief. And um, I've always felt a little bit alien because of that, because I'm like, I'm not crying. I'm a cry, I, I cry because other people cry, not because I'm feeling a particularly emotional or sad. That being said, there's quite a few loved ones I've lost where I think about them often, but it's fondly. Like I'm not going, I'm not pining. And I think that's important, uh, but pining is also okay, right? It's okay to miss a person and be sad about it. And I think that you can turn that into gratitude. Like your sadness is a direct result of the impact they had on you. And that's, that's pretty cool.